try to. Do you have a boogie maker? Oh, okay. morning y'all it is dark but it is 6 46 we are gonna run um mateo what did you say you wanted for breakfast um, a burrito so we're gonna go get some burritos before i drop them off at school so that is insanely blurry we're gonna go get some burritos on our way to school and then i will catch up with you at school bye friends Okay, y'all, it is 11.08. My kids are at recess, so I have a sub that's covering my recess time plus a little so that I can continue working on virtual stuff. So, <clears throat> um, this morning when I had, my kids were in the computer lab with my aide and I had a sub for a little bit. After that, I got all of my activities for next week assigned to kids so those can go out on their specific days. And then um, I also finished... The agendas for next week are finished, so now I'm working on the following week trying to get that done and caught up. So, I'm going to keep working on that and then breathe for a minute because I'm exhausted. And we read the Armadillo Rodeo by Jan Brett this morning. We've been reading all of her books this week. Um, and they, they liked it. It was really cute. They didn't like it as much as the mitten and the hat. Um, but they still loved it. And we did, after that, we did a directed drawing <clears throat> of an armadillo, which is great because I have several kids that are still struggling with following, like, multi-step directions. And so this kind of gives me a chance to work on that with them. Um, and I also have a couple that are perfectionists. So if it's not perfect, like, they lose it. And so this really helps them out with realizing it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little bit messy and you can make mistakes, but we just move on. And so I like that activity because it really works on that with them. Um, and then for math, we are working on the number 14. We'll probably do the counting game and write the number and a whole bunch of things to work on the number 14. Um, I'll probably also give them a little bit of Dreambox time on their iPads because we are doing a Dreambox challenge um, where the class that with the, the kids that have the most lessons accumulated on Dreambox, that class gets a prize at the end of the month. So, And I've been doing prizes um, at the end of each week. So at the end of each week, my kid in my class that has completed the most lessons on Dreambox, which they can also do at home, and they get a piece of candy. So that's been working. They've been loving it. And it also really works on their math skills. So Dreambox is a great app. But I'm going to get busy on these before my kids come back. And I will check in with you later. Bye, friends. All right, y'all. It is 1.15. My kids are at PE right now. And so I am going to, I have until 1.50. Um, it's kind of like my planning time. And half the time, I just sit because it is so much having to teach in a mask all day long and so sometimes I'm just sitting and chilling for the whole time and my lights are out because I can't handle anything right now they've been so loud today they've been great they've done wonderful but they've been so loud and so like I'm just gonna work with no lights and no sound and enjoy the peace and quiet for a minute. Um, I got ahead on agendas, so I have um, weeks 22 and 23 finished on my agendas, um, which is awesome. That takes a huge chunk and relief off of me. 
So right now I'm going to work on planning my interventions for next week. Um, my tier two kids, I meet with them um, twice a week right now. I meet with them twice a week. And then my aide pulls them every day and works with them on sight words. So, um, like on that, those two days that I work with them, like she'll pull them for a little bit and work with them while I'm working with my tier three kids. And then I'll pull my tier twos from her and I'll have her read with another group of kids. But, excuse me, um, my two, t my tier two kids are really struggling with reading. When I was doing their running records um, yesterday and today, like they, it was, all of them were hard A's. Like they just struggled so much with reading a level A, which two of my kids are ESL. And so they really, actually three of them are ESL and they really struggle with vocabulary. So I think instead of pulling um, like fiction books, I'm going to pull a lot of really strong and clear non-fiction books for them because I think having those real pictures of real items is going to help them a lot more than them having to figure out a fake storyline, if that makes sense. So I'm going to try and come up with some activities for them. They've been playing sight word bingo with my aide, but they're kind of getting bored of that. So I'm going to try and prep out and plan some activities for them to do with her and maybe change it up each day and see if that helps. Um, oh. Sorry, y'all. Um, but I am going to right now sit down and plan out my tier three activities for next week and um, some tier two activities and also kind of make a um, more like scheduled out a uh, week for my tier for my aid um because like the one that I have for myself is working really well and I think she would benefit from having that too so I'm going to make her one of those and plan out my interventions so here we go bye okay, y'all I just finished planning my interventions for next week and the activities that my kids are going to be doing with my tier two kids are gonna be doing with my aid. So I thought I'd give y'all a peek at what I did and share with you the blog um, that I got my ideas from that I love, um, even for my own kids. So let me turn you around and show you. All right, so first, <clears throat> this is the blog that I use. It's kind of hard to see because of the sub, honey. But it is Days with Gray. Um, and you can follow her on Instagram. But she has some amazing, amazing, amazing activities for kiddos. So all the way from toddlers all the way up through five to seven year olds. And so, and she has tons of like alphabet activities and things like that, which are perfect for my intervention kids. So, um, on Monday, my kids are going to do a drive and park with letters. So I'm going to make a basically like street lines out of tape and then put letters all over the road and then call out and say, hey, um, go park on the letter N, and then they'll drive their little car and park on the letter N. And so I got that idea from her blog. Um, but I'm gonna do that with my tier three, and then my aide is gonna do the same thing, but with sight words um, for my tier two kids. So she'll say, drive and park on the word my, and they'll drive their car and park on the word my. Um, uh, Tuesday with my tier three, I'm gonna do a a poke and pull name so and that's another activity I got from her she has such good ideas but I'm going to cover a muff I'm going to put letters of their name inside each spot of a muffin tin um, and then cover it with tissue paper and then they can poke in I'll get some like tweezers or something they can poke in and pull out the letter is it in my name yes or no and then they will put it they'll put the letters in their name in order um, and so they're going to do that. And then I am reading with my tier two kids on Tuesday. And then um, I'm going to do a sensory bin for sound. So I'm going to do a, like a little container with beans. And then they'll pull out a letter, say the sound, and then they'll put it on an alphabet arc. And they'll put the letters in order. Um, and then my um, aide is going to do find and circle sight words. So I'm going to put a bunch of sight words on a chart paper and she'll just say, find the word the, and they'll circle the word the. Um, we're going to do a toy matchup for sound. So I'm going to have different little 
toys for each letter of the alphabet and we'll match up the sounds for those letters. Um, and then I'll specifically give each kid um, the letters that they are working on in pull out interventions with our intervention teacher. So like if I have a kid that is really focusing on the letter J with her, I'll make sure um, that he has the toy for the letter J in his pile. Um, and then my tier two kids read with me. They read with me two days a week. Um, and then I'm going to assess them again at the end of next week. And if they're just not um, progressing as much as I would like them to, then I may pull them, find a way to pull them an extra day a week. So, um, and then Friday we're writing letters. And then I thought it'd be fun for Friday the Tier 2 kids with my aide could place that word tic-tac-toe. So she'll sew them a word. And they, if they read the word why, right, goodness, I can't talk. They'll put a Lego on a tic-tac-toe board. Oh, gosh, let's see if I can turn this around. Ah, technical difficulties. Um, so if they read a word right, they get to put a Lego on a tic-tac-toe board. If they read it wrong... Um, my aide gets to put a Lego on the board, and they'll see who wins. If they win or the aide wins, um, I think they'll have fun with that. So, those are my interventions. I'm going to chill for a minute before I have to go get my kids, and then I'll catch up with you after school. Bye, friends. Hey, friends. It is officially 3.20. It is after school. Um, the rest of the day went pretty good. My kids, they were a hot mess today, but it's okay. Um, I'm about to do my Zoom that I have at 3.30, and then I'm going to head out of here. So, thank you so much for catching up with me and spending the day with me. I've missed it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you love having fun in kindergarten, because that's what we do. So, always remember that you're the best teacher for your littles, and I hope you have an amazing weekend. Bye, friends. Bye.